ETL Computer 2. Today, we're going to have a look at the arithmetic and logic unit for TTL Computer 2. And uh, we're going to just dive right into this today. And we can see that the, uh, the heart of our uh, ALU is the 74LS181, which is a four-bit arithmetic and logic unit. And uh, the 74LS81 performs uh, up to 32 different uh, math operations, but we will only be using seven of those. And uh, we'll get to talking about how that's how that's done in a little bit down the road. Okay, so we have two of these. They're four-bit uh, ALU units. So um, in our design, in our, in our setup here, each uh, ALU performs uh, only operations on, on, on four bits of operand A and operand B. So uh, this happens to be uh, the first ALU here is operating on the, the lower four bits of the A and B operand. And uh, this ALU, ALU is performing operations on the upper four bits of operand A and B. And then in addition to the, uh, the two ALU chips, we also have a comparator, an 8-bit comparator. And we use that to basically um, calculate our, our Z flag. And then um, for our uh, negative flag, we just simply use the uh, bit number uh, eight, the topmost bit, which is the signed bit and assigned in a signed in a signed number. That gives us our negative flag. And then we have our uh, ripple carry out from our high order, the high order bit, ALU. Um, okay, so that's the basic setup for our ALU. Now, as I mentioned, uh, 70, uh, the 74 LS 181 performs up to 32 operations, but we're only gonna do seven. And uh, part of the reason for that is that a lot of them uh, aren't that, that useful in, in, in practicality, but we also want to, our control signals in our computer are, are at a premium. Everyone is very, um, very critical because we only have uh, 24 of those. So we're going to dedicate three bits, ALU 0, 1, and 2, as our control bits, which will indicate which operation that the ALU should perform. And we basically have these seven operations here. We have uh, increment the A, the A, R, the A operand by one, and that'll be ALU zero. We have subtract, which will be signals ALU zero and one. Uh, add will be our signals ALU zero and two. Decrement would be ALU zero, one and two. XOR, ALU one, OR operation, ALU one and two, and an add operation would just be uh, ALU two control. Okay, so that is, um, you know, that that, that can control construct is, is an artificial construct that, um, you know, TTL computer two is imposing on the 74 LS 181s. So we need, uh, some decode logic to, to take those control signal inputs and then output you know, all the signals that the, uh, that the 74181 is expecting. So we have this little decode circuit, which I'm gonna open. And uh, this is a bit of a complex circuit. So I'm not really gonna go into this at all, but we, we already went through the, the different math operations and these are all the output signals that the 74181 expects. So this, this logic um, right, decodes our, our three input controls um, as we need it to, 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 to set up the, uh, the ALU uh, to, to, to correspond to the, you know, the requested operation. So, but one thing I'm gonna show you here is um, how I generated this because this is um, a pretty cool feature of um, digital. We go to synthesis 
And basically what we're doing with synthesis is we are creating a truth table, uh, a truth table for the function we want to perform. And we're going to say open because I have the truth table here. Right, so this is the truth table. Here's our three, our three input controls. Uh, this is the carry in bit. And these are all the output signals that the 74 uh, LS181 requires. So I'm not going to go through this, but this is just a simple truth table. And then after you create your truth table, you just say um, create circuit. And bingo. So that's how that's how I got that circuit uh, was using that synthesis approach. Okay, so I just wanted to... Uh, I'm not gonna go into that in great detail, but I just wanted to show you that that capability exists and it's uh, it's really convenient because it would have been <laughs> a little bit uh, tedious to come up with this circuit on my own. But uh, so that's how that works and that's how I got this. Uh, so I just updated this a little bit from, uh, from the basic circuit that was created from uh, digital and uh, I will have to, uh, once we get to our uh, physical design phase, I'm gonna have to redo this circuit using just straight 7,400 ICs, but uh, I wanted to just confirm that this circuit is in fact uh, what we need for the final design. And in fact, anywhere you see uh, individual logic gates like this in the design, it means that that's temporary right now. It's just still work in progress. And it's not the final design because everything in the design uh, to do the hardware, once we get to the hardware design phase, needs to be implemented using the 7400 ICs. Okay, so that's the decode. That's our little decode um, uh, logic that we have here. And then one other thing is uh, a D latch. And that D latch is used to latch in the the carry in, the carry in flag. And the reason why we need to do that is because uh, we don't want that flag to update uh, in the middle of our microcode, <laughs> uh, which can be the case because let's say we're doing uh, we're doing an add and, and the result is gonna go to, we're adding A and B registers together. So we'll have the A, you know, the A register values here and the B register values here. And once we do the add and the ALU will, will output that, you know, on the, uh, on the result, uh, the result signals, we have to either store that to the back to the A register or we have to update the flags. And we, we, we don't do both at the same time. We either update the A register or we update the flags. We don't do it at the same time because that introduces a race condition because as soon as we update the flags, if we didn't have this latch, it would update the carry in bit. And that would, um, you know, change the result of, the, potentially change the result of the math operation. Same thing as this, if we, uh, if we stored the A, the result back to the A register first, before we stored the flags, we would be changing the value of the A register, which would, make it be, you know, a different math operation again, and the flags might potentially be different. So we can't, uh, we really, we really need to latch in the, uh, the carry in flag at the beginning of the math operation. And we don't allow that to change again until we're completely done uh, with, our, with our ALU operation. Okay, so that's, that's the design of our ALU. All right, so let's go to simul simulation now. All right, we're starting our simulation. And all right, so this is, uh, I'm gonna keep this a, a little bit small so we can see, I'll make, it make this a little bit larger. Now I wanna be able to see all of our results here. That's good enough, I think. No, we can't see the Z flag. All right, so that's about as, big as we can make it. All right, so let's clear the carry flag because this is a, a, an a active low signal. So raising this means no carry. 
All right, and let's do uh, an add operation is control ALU2. So we set that up. All right, so now we're set up for add. So let's, we have nothing in the A register and nothing in the B and our results are zero, right? As we would expect. We can see here that our Z flag is an active low. So this is a, a low signal. So that means that's zero and that's what we have. We have zero in the result. And uh, same thing for the ripple carry out. This is a negative uh, active low. So this means no carry out. And uh, this is the, the negative signal and then that's low, right? So we're not, we're not, this is not zero, zero is not negative. All right, so let's do add one, one to A and we have zero in B and the result is one. Two in A and B is zero, so our result is two. And uh, let's add one here. So three and one is four, right? So we see that that uh, the add operation is being completed. Our zero, right, our output is four. So our zero flag is, uh, is saying uh, not zero because it's active high. So that's not zero. Carry out again, high, that means no carry out and our negative flag is low. So we're, this is not a negative result. Okay, so let's change this to be um, eight, this is 80. That's right, so this is, this is three coming in uh, in the A register and this is 80. So we have 83 is the result. Again, not zero, still no carry out, but now we see that the negative flag is raised, right? And that's because bit A is set and that indicates, you know, if this was a signed, signed number, that this would be a uh, negative. Okay. All right, so let's um, end that. Now, uh, when the ALU signals are all low, that enables the latch. Uh, the latch can clock in a new carry, uh, a new carry value if, if there's no signals coming into the ALU. And also, if there's no signals coming into the ALU, our ALU output is at high Z. So the ALU is disabled. All right, so again, I have a no carry in. Let's do um, increment this time, which is ALU zero. All right, so now we have our control signal in and we can see that our, our latch is now, our, our carry in is now latched and we have our output is now enabled since we have a control signal is raised. And uh, let's clear this stuff out. All right, so we're doing an increment operation and the increment is increment the A. The B, the B has nothing to do with the increment. So it has no effect on that. Um, but now our A is zero and increment outputs one, right? So we have A is one and our result is two, right? Three and our result is four. All right, so that's just the increment. And again, um, our uh, zero flag is not set because we have, we have it's, it's not zero. Rip, ripple carry out is high, so that means no carry out. And our negative flag is, is low again, so it's not negative. Okay. All right, so that's, I don't think we need to go through all of these operations. Let's do maybe, um, all right, we have no carry in again. Let's do an uh, add this time is ALU2 again. So let's do, um, All right, so this is F and let's just add one. All right, and that, so what we have, we have we're adding one to, to uh, F15. 
right? So we see here, uh, when we do that, we're overflowing, right? We're going back to zero. Our output is zero. Our flag is zero. Uh, our negative flag is not set. But now we see that our ripple carry out is low. So that means that we have a carry out, which we did, right? Because we have 15 plus one is 16. So that gives us, right, it's an example of the ripple carry out. Okay, so that's it for a look at our ALU circuit. I think in our next video, we will look at our uh, register circuitry as well as our RAM and ROM circuitry. So until then, that's it. Thanks for watching.